Hello everyone, I'm Will and I'm here with an interesting PDH deck tech for you today. This episode we'll be taking on a powerful colorless commander with Patchwork Automaton from the Kamigawa set. Patchwork Automaton is a 1-1 artifact construct for two colorless with Ward 2 and says whenever you cast an artifact spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Patchwork Automaton. As a colorless commander, this is this creature is utterly insane, and I would argue it's probably the strongest colorless commander for PEH release thus far. It has guaranteed hexproof on turn two, and more than likely it will be untouched till at least turn four, as most kill spells cost two or more mana, and nearly every card in your deck will synergize with the second ability, regardless of how optimized you built the deck, allowing you to snowball this little fella into quite a monstrosity. And so today I will show you some of the more impactful cards that I've included in my deck build. So what is the goal of the deck? It is to generate an explosive turns of casting artifact spells while still maintaining a full grip and then pair it with evasive effects to deliver finishing blows. So first off, we're gonna be using several cantrip effects offered in colorless, such as Barb Sextant, Chromatic Sphere, and Chromatic Star. These spells all allow you to cast for one, giving a counter to Patchwork Automaton, then pay one, tap, sacrifice to draw a card allow you to trigger the commander's ability while still maintaining your hand size. Now, in addition to these cantrip effects, we also need to add artifacts that help us interact with the board state. Cards such as Blood Tallow Candle, Aeolipile, and Heart Piercer Bow allow us to remove potential blockers from the board. You can sacrifice Blood Tallow for six mana to provide a minus five minus five effect that can provide uh, a removal effect for larger creatures, while Aeolipile and Heart Piercer Bows Damage effects are useful for removing mana dorks and other tactical creatures. Uh, some, some additional cards that I would also include in the build that are worth noting is Introduction to Annihilation. While it isn't an artifact spell, it is still a strong removal spell that can get rid of bombs that may become out of reach for some other removal spells. And another possible honorary mention is Universal Solvent, which can destroy a target permanent for a total of 8 mana, which is a little pricey, but it can remove anything you want. So while... While we are constantly growing the automaton through cantrips and clearing the board of potential blockers, we also want to inc incorporate several Voltron-style equipments into the deck. Cards such as Cathar's uh, Shield grants vigilance, allowing the automaton to discourage attacks in our direction while still allowing us to continually swing, swing each turn. In addition to this, we, have also ha we also have Hunted Cloak, allowing us to trample over any chump blockers to still consistently apply pressure as well as Cliffhaven Kite Sails, which you can cast for one and it immediately attaches to your creature that can allow us to fly over our opponent's board. Another cute interaction that I found was uh, adding Executioner's Hood to the deck, which gives us uh, gives equipped creature Intimidate, making our creatures only blockable against artifact creatures as, autom as Automaton is colorless, so there, there are no creatures with the same color. In terms of of other creatures we'd include in this deck. Here are some of the must includes with Foundry Inspector and Clockwork Gnomes. Foundry Inspector costs three colorless and is a 3-2 construct that says artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. With Foundry Inspector on the board, all artifact spells now have a reduced casting cost, allowing you to completely empty your hand to make Patchwork Automaton massive. And Clockwork Gnomes casting cost is four colorless and has a 2-2 creature that says, pay three, tap it, regenerate target artifact creature. With Clockwork Gnomes on the field, it allows you to either have constant protection on the pack, Patchwork Automaton, or it can act as an indestruct, indestructible chump blocker, which turns out to be a very valuable effect in a, in a four-player setting. In addition to these cards, I was also interested in including several modular artifact creatures, such as Arcbound Worker, Hybrid, and Stinger. All three of these creatures have the ability modular, which allows you to transfer their plus one plus one counters onto target artifact creature when they are put into the graveyard. These creatures serve, serve the role of chunk blocker, and that can be sacrificed to minimize your life loss while still transferring all their counters to your commander, ultimately making a bigger nightmare for your opponents. And so while the, the Voltron strategy is the primary strategy of the deck, I'd also include an alternative win con. Uh, with the inclusion of Golem Foundry, uh, which costs three colorless and says, when you cast an artifact spell, you may put a charge counter on Golem Foundry. And the ability to remove three charge counters from Golem Foundry, put a 3-3 colorless Golem artifact creature token onto the battlefield. 
Obviously, this is an auto-include in this deck and provides constant supply of 3-3 blockers. But also the fact that it triggers the same as the Patchwork Automaton means the deck is relatively tuned around it without any modifications. In addition to this, I'd also like to note that you can also activate it instant speed and there is no limit on the number of activations per turn. So you can just have Golem Foundry stacked with counters and, and can either activate after somebody wipes the board in response to somebody attacking you, or right before the turn begins uh, on your opponent's end step to get rid of that summoning sickness, uh, protecting it from sorcery speed removal. It is a really nice card and a must include in this deck. So there you have it. This is my take on a patchwork automaton PH deck uh, focused on Voltron strategy, generating a massive threat in a few turns. And as you can see, the mana curve of this deck is relatively low, focused on 1 to 2 CMC, and as one might expect, the deck is nearly entirely artifacts, constituting 62% of the deck, and the cost uh, to build the deck is around $18, not including Wastelands. And you can check out the full deck list in the description. Please like and subscribe, and let us know what interesting strategies you would include in this build. Thanks for watching, PDH Commander. Mm -hmm.